Well, that's way easier than the Facebook Connect thing. It is. Hmm. Setting it, up your meeting for YouTube Live. Meeting is now live streaming on YouTube, it says. I don't know if that's true. I just, I, yeah, I just got the, the YouTube uh, notification, actually. Well, shit, that was easy. Yeah, I feel bad for the people that aren't getting notifications because that, uh, that just worked. Yeah, I got a notification as well. So, all right. Yeah, and we look good. We sound good. We're, uh, we're doing the thing. Nice. Um, I don't know. Do we, we, we want to hang around for a bit? We want to share this? Do we want to talk a little? What do you, what do you, what do yeah, you, yeah? Gonna... Like, I'm sort of like, I'm leaning into doing literally everything I can that's positive and talking to you is pretty positive and hanging out with fam playing music yesterday felt pretty good. I like it. I like it. So yeah. Okay. So let me uh, let me share it back to so to uh, to the to you know. Hi, everybody. What's going on? It's an interesting question. Who's going to show up uh, just because of notifications? It is uh, one watching now. Not many people apparently. That's um, interesting. That that would indicate people are used to seeing us pop up in their in their notifications, like uh, like uh, the ten o'clock ish, right? Yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. It's got the your so local uh, watermark on it. What does? Um, the video feed. I'm, I just got into it on the the studio. Interesting. Yeah. Gonna get the share link. All right. All right. So I'm sharing it so local. And uh, my, on my, my page. on my personal page. Wait, stay, yes, stay on this page. What the? Oh, did I just post that without without putting the link in there? I think I did. <laughs> hey, we're live. Are we going to give you a link? No, we're not. Merp, merp, merp. Yep, sure did. Uh, edit. <laughs> Good Lord. My computer is like, my, my browser is really slow. I think I need to like restart my computer. Probably would be helpful. That's probably what I should do. This, uh, uh, this poor i'm using the uh like the little chromebook tablet that we got right it's like using a computer from the 90s <laughs> so it's so slow right on okay going back but to what my, are you gonna do my personal page all right so you you seem like uh we're on now well, let's not have a personal conversation i don't know you seem better today you seem more yeah, we, I mean, we can, like, you know, it's, uh, I mean, that's sort of the, the, the role that, that, you know, I kind of see us leaning into because we are dudes that are in touch with our feelings and not, you know, hyper masculinated, right. closed off freaking weirdos. Hey, Jen. Yeah, me. I got, my, <laughs> I got my notification. Morning, dudes. That's Jen Rikita. Nice to see awesome, you. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I got a cryptic uh, message from her last night. I made you something. What's your email address or what's your, what's your mailing address? I'm like, well, now I'm super curious. <laughs> so Jen's mailing me something. I don't know what that might be, but that's super cool. awesome. Something she made. So that's even cooler. That's I read cool. a really great article. I like when I start Firefox, I, I enabled a thing where it like puts eight or nine stories in my feed that, you know, I might be interested in. Really good one about about Fiona Apple this morning, about men explain Fiona Apple to me by Kristen Iverson, uh, about how how male critics have always tended to like feel like they need to explain Fiona Apple to women, which is kind of hilarious. It's a really great really? write up. Yeah, you know, like they try to make tried to make her a Lolita when uh, when title came out. She was eighteen. She wrote most of the songs when she was seventeen, and the content in those songs is like. You know, it's very grown up. <laughs> what was it? What was it like? It was like, you know, I was just one of my favorite albums of all time. Like, there's, there's nothing it's about that really, album I don't like. I really couldn't good. believe that giant voice was coming out of that tiny person. You know, uh, yeah. but anyway, it's about her songwriting and over the years. You remember she won an MTV Music Award. She said, "This is bullshit. It's all bullshit. This whole thing is bullshit." And she got like, she got uh, Sinead O'Connor over that. Like everybody then labeled her as a brat and a troublemaker and a, you know, ungrateful. And right. it's about what's happened in her career since then. A absolutely great, great article this morning from uh, from Nylon about uh, about Fiona Apple. Really good stuff. And it turns out the young lady that wrote the article first saw Fiona Apple when she was six years old uh, at a piano recital. Fiona was like ten, 
and this young lady played a song on the piano and you know was very excited she only made one mistake and then this 10 year old came up and played an original song that she'd written and she thought it was the most beautiful thing she'd ever heard in her life so she's known about fiona apple since they were little kids in the same town and then to watch this whole you know career arc for uh for ms apple is pretty cool and i'm i'm a That's huge cool. huge <clears throat> fan of fiona apple like with the 90 yeah, word she's, album she's incredible and, yeah i'm yeah i'm gonna have to i'm actually gonna have to probably get that that og album out of the oh it's so good shadow, shadow boxer that song shadow boxer is just like oh great stuff great stuff hey good oh, morning laugh track <laughs> Uh, please fire her a long distance high five from me. <clears throat> long distance high five from Corey, Miss Donna. She's high fiving you back. There you go. Uh, Jen says Corey is next, so I will need his address too. I'm gonna have to find out where I am, <laughs> and then, I, and then I'll, I'll send you that. I mean, where are you in the region? Hudson, Spring Hill. Spring Hill. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, Sherry B. Nice to see you this morning. Hope all is well. Um, um, hope you, so, you and the tribe are doing well. I was listening to some haze this morning while making coffee. Yeah. And I got what might be the best news COVID related that I've gotten yet. So, you know, the, the kids of health, uh, sort of health weather map or whatever. Right. This is a, a thermometer that connects and automatically uploads data to a central uh, collection point. Right. And they've been tracking this data for a long time. So they've got baseline values for flu season, cold season, that kind of thing. Right. Right. And so they've been, they've been tracking anomalous fevers and it's been tracking hotspots two weeks in advance, um, which is, uh, uh, you know, pretty stellar. And unless right. of course, like DeSantis, you fucking ignore it. And then it's not as stellar. Uh, but what they know, like the is, mayor from Jaws. <laughs> yes, it's definitely safe to go back in the water. Just throw grandma in there first. She swims yeah. slower than you. The Kittner boy. Hey. We'll sacrifice the Kittner boy. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Um, so they uh, uh, they did, they tracked some stuff in Houston and San Francisco. And three days after they closed down all the restaurants and everything, fever numbers started going down. Sorry. Yeah. Was okay. that. Was that audible? Uh, just the vibrating. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So uh, Houston and San Francisco uh, uh, had their like complete lockdown. Uh, Houston, I think, just shut down restaurants and all that kind of stuff. Um, and three days later, uh, uh, Kansas metrics on uh, uh, fevers went down. So they're they're able to uh, to track results in real time. Right. Potentially, right? Like again, those are two data points. We probably need like a lot more to be like really, really sure. Uh, but it's promising. So, considering I share a bunch of stuff that isn't promising all the fuck time, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a crazy uh, time. Quite a crazy is... time. Uh... Can confirm. Okay. Then what yeah. happened? Uh, the outside drama. Don't worry about it. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. I think, uh, I think one of the things that uh, I actually had my first, uh, my first, you know, I do a men's better intervention group on Wednesday evenings and they all showed up early on the video conference. We had a successful uh, really? first teleconference with like six, six people plus me. Um, and uh, I think one of the things that I'm concerned about, um, not because of my guys, right. There's nothing that indicated last night that this is true, but I think we should be watching, uh, you know, with so many more people home, so much more with all the stress, the financial stress, the the sickness stress. Uh, it's a real thing, you know. People's worry about this, people's concern about this, even if they're not saying it out loud. Uh, but uh, I think we should be on the lookout for a rise in domestic violence. I think we should all be paying attention to what's going on. Uh, we're home more. We may hear things in our neighbors' homes that we don't hear. And I want to make sure that I give people space to understand that if you hear, uh, you know, what obvious sounds or, or signals of domestic violence happening, it is, it is you know, uh, it's not the wrong thing to do to call the police. Uh, even if it turns out to be nothing, 95% uh, of the guys that I see in my work are there because they had an encounter with law enforcement and law enforcement determined that they needed to, uh, to be arrested. Uh, or, or in some way uh, involved in the court system to get them to me. People, men, do not seek out domestic violence counseling without being referred to it. Um, no. It's true. Sorry. 
Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, uh, in substance abuse, it's probably 70, 30, 70 percent mm. of people that we would see are court ordered uh, to attend some sort of assessment and treatment program. But 30 percent seek it on their own. They know they need more help than they can uh, get right. by themselves. Uh, they don't know about AA and NA meetings. They don't know anything about the culture or how to find those meetings. So, uh, you know, 70, 30 is a lot different than 95, 5. And I think it's probably more like 98, 2. Uh, so, so the likelihood that someone's going to spontaneously recognize that they have a domestic violence problem show up uh, to see us is exceedingly rare. I can think of two cases in all the years I've been doing this where that's happened. So that, well, there may have been more than that. But uh, my point is, you're gonna you're gonna see and hear signs of things that maybe you weren't you weren't uh, you weren't catching before, and it is okay to call the police and let them sort it out. That's the fact. Yeah. Uh, um, and and you may you may lose friends over that. I'll tell you right now that 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 victims of domestic violence often uh, resent the people that try and step in, and there's a lot of complex psychological reasons for that. But chief among them is that many many victims of domestic violence are dependent on the person that's abusing them, and they can't make it on their own. So they're staying with someone because they don't have any options, they don't have any choices, they don't have anywhere they can go, and they resent anything that upsets that apple cart and makes it you know makes them less secure uh, in a moment when what they really need is more security. So I don't know. I just thought I'd drop that uh, that happy PSA on people this morning that right. we're going to see more of that. And if it's happening um, in your life, you need to reach out and uh, and find some help. Um, preach. Yeah, Christian yeah. Gillibrand was actually all over that yesterday too, which was uh, which was good to hear. Um. Yep. Donna says, "Tell the people the science, Greg." Well, obviously, loud arguments where you hear stuff breaking. Um, that's an indicator that there's a domestic violence issue in the home. And that may not mean that somebody is being, you know, at, having stuff broken over them physically, but that is a, that is a stepping stone on the way to physical violence and an intervention at that moment might, uh, might save somebody uh, from physical harm. Uh, obviously people that are saying, stop hitting me, you know, if you're hearing people hit each other, that's, uh, you know, I mean, the signs are absolutely obvious. Um, and as far as more subtle signs, you know, neighbors may seek you out uh, to ask for your help or ask uh, ask for just human contact that isn't with their abuser. And uh, you should uh, facilitate that. And it's, you know, it's dangerous. It's literally dangerous to people that try to intervene. Uh, so protect yourself. Make sure you're okay. Make sure you do everything you can. Uh, but the best thing to do if you have evidence that something like that is going on, I don't mean evidence. I mean, if you have if suspicions is, uh, you know, report it. It's tough, but uh, it saves lives. So it's something to think about. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Morning, Bob. Another Benson. news. Yeah. Um, 3.28 million uh, applied for uh, jobless claims uh, this past week. Right. I think that's probably not even half, considering how many systems uh, failed, uh, which is already the highest number in history. That shouldn't be too surprising. Um, Somebody just tweeted, for a sense of scale, it's as if the entire population of Chicago lost their job. Oosh. Yeah. And I'm sure we were as prepared for that influx of, of, of calls yeah. uh, to the Not federal remotely. relief systems as we've been to everything else. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. So 3 million jobs have been lost to coronavirus. Again, that's in one week. That's another six times the losses of the Great Recession in a single period. <sighs> Yeah, that's the thing. Like the 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 fact that they're not doing a UBI, students are completely and totally screwed. Poor people are completely and totally screwed. Homeless people are completely and totally screwed. Stay at home uh, parents are completely and totally screwed, uh, and corporations are making out like gangsters. Um, you know, it it. I thought we were were getting a lot farther along the UBI track than I think we're at, uh, because it's one thing for a bunch of uh, of talking heads to be making really really good arguments, but when push right. comes to shove the reason why they're sending grants to companies is so that you stay in your job. Right? Like that's, that's it. They, they, that, that control that the way that power and money flows must be maintained. Well, think about how, you know, Lindsey Graham and the other Republicans that tried to hold the bill up last night in the Senate, think about their argument. Their argument was if we make the amount that people get too much, they'll just stay unemployed. Well, and that's the thing. If it was, if it wasn't means tested, then yeah. they, that wouldn't be true, right? right? But they never think about that. Yeah. Right? And like, we shouldn't be means testing rich people and we shouldn't be means means testing uh, poor people. Like, right. like, so imagine this. So Greg, I'm going to offer you $10,000. Yeah. 
right? Okay. And I, I'm going to offer a thousand people that you know, ten thousand dollars, and you can pick who they are. I don't even care, right? Okay. I'm going to pick one billionaire at random and give him ten thousand dollars. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Right. This is rock science. Like that's. But you know, like, but but I know the argument, right? But I think a lot of random people would know. Fuck that guy. You can, you know, we, we should spend it on more poor people. Well, okay, what if that guy? If listen, I know enough people who are wealthy that give a lot to people less fortunate than themselves, to their employees when they're sick, to uh, to yep. people that they randomly help. I know that that wealthy people tend to want some strings attached to their giving. I get that, but the fact is, if you if you know if if the person that you picked. Uh, is fine. What we I don't know. Maybe they're going to take that ten thousand dollars and give it to ten poor people in their community, thousand bucks piece, right? You know they're going to do something. I I just I don't know. I'm sort of Anne Frank about this. I still believe in the goodness of people. You know. Well, and, and I believe because that of even the way, wealthy people yeah. will do that. Yeah. Because of the way taxation uh, would work under, especially under Yang's UBI, um, right? They'd be getting they'd be getting far higher taxed. Um, right. When it all comes down to it, than, uh, than than what they receive, it's just a ridiculous, ridiculous argument. But at the same time, like people are calling for a general strike. You know why they can't? Because they're terrified of losing their fucking jobs. Because that's yep. the only way they get money. Or yep. if they had UBI, that well, I guess the the uh, the head of the largest union in the country um, was uh, uh, you know quickly coming into Yang's orbit. Because so don't think about universal basic income as as money. Think about it the, as the biggest universal strike fund that has yep. ever existed as leverage for labor. Right. Like yeah. anybody, any group of people could walk out at any time because they've got support. Um, yep. They can, they can never let that happen. Like that it would that's, be like, it would be like unionizing every single worker in America in a way. Yes. Because yes. when, when unions, you know, call a strike, they often are financially supporting the strikers or at least, you know, replacing some of their income uh, yep. to make the strike effective. They know that people can't just not have money. So they find a way to uh, put money in their pocket a little bit at a time, emergencies and things like that. Imagine if every worker in America had that power and add that to the number of homeless people and people who don't work, whose lives would be transformed. It's, it's, it's a great idea. And it's why uh, corporations and those that are in their pocket uh, or have the corporation, you know, deeply lodged in their mouth and throat uh, don't like this Whoa. idea. Hey, Whoa. I mean, um, you're not wrong. No, I'm not. I'm fe feeling pretty salty today. Yeah. Well, and and you picked you picked your words very very carefully. Yeah. Unlike, yeah. you know, say, notice I didn't genderize me. it. That's for sure. You didn't. You didn't. No, you were very. It was it was very they and there. It was it was solid work. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm feeling pretty pretty Bill Hicks this morning. You remember him? There. Oh, yes. comic Bill Hicks. Oh God, yeah, my favorite. He's really good. He's the angriest, funniest man on the planet for a while there. <laughs> yeah yeah uh, donna that's why it will never happen leverage labor costs uh the rich too much money i we outnumber them by a shit ton you know yeah. if the hey you know i saw a funny meme going around yesterday it was uh average check expected to be twelve hundred dollars uh estimated cost to build a guillotine twelve hundred dollars hmm. <laughs> i hate it when Corey gets distracted and misses my jokes I'm sorry. What was your joke? I'm sure it was very. The funny. joke was uh, the average check is going to be twelve hundred dollars. Uh, estimated cost to build a guillotine twelve hundred dollars. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So somebody asked on I can't remember what what thread it was, but somebody was like, "So like, wouldn't it be easier like with you know instead of stopping riots on the back end, wouldn't it be easier uh, you know to to build trust in government if you just did good things?" What? Like yeah, that's yeah. crazy. That's the whole, that's all the marbles, dude. That's the whole thing. Welcome to politics. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think, I think, I, I do think that, I mean, I, I don't, it's not easy to find any positives in any of this, but having us have a moment to rethink UBI and universal, uh, universal healthcare, um, I think a lot more people have had it brought front and center to them. Yep. that if they're if they're if they lose their jobs now they lose their health insurance anyway that yeah exactly you know if layoffs mean uh, you know can you afford the astronomical payments for your health insurance if you're if your employer isn't subsidizing it and you know the best argument i heard from the medicare for all person that was living here among us ashley ashley renner uh was uh, it, you know and we were at guild dog when we were having this conversation and it occurred to me that you know the owners at guild dog also in a large plumbing contracting company 
And imagine if, if you could take that burden of paying all the money they pay for health insurance for their employees off their plate, yep. you know, um, that would be an enormous relief to employers, not just to the people that work for them. If we just took that off of their plate, right? That's more money going into the economy for other things. Um, and, you know, when health insurance was first offered as an employee benefit, it was because it was cheap and easy to do. And it was comprehensive coverage. Now, uh, the coverage plans are awful. The deductibles are massive. Uh, the co-pays are massive to, make, to keep it affordable. Uh, and that's not where we should be. And so let's just take the, let's eliminate the middleman, eliminate the health insurance industry completely and refocus that effort on community health instead of clinical health. I think that would be a really good start. So, yeah. Yeah, true loyalty is not built by force. That is the fact, Jack. Fear and respect are not the same thing. Nope. Yeah. So what else is new? Um, just looking at stuff. So the FBI uh, killed a suspect yesterday that uh, was planning to drive a truck full of explosives into a hospital. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, the FBI uh, was investigating a guy who had made credible threats and was planning to drive a truck full of explosives into a hospital in, uh, in Kansas City or somewhere near Kansas City. And uh, they served a warrant. We're going to question him, and he apparently tried to uh, kill them, and they killed him. Uh, Thanks, white, FBI, na white, na white nationalist group group in uh, in Missouri. Fucking, of course, yep. it was. Yep, um, they've been suspecting for a bit now. Apparently, the FBI that people are going to try and weaponize uh, this disaster. You know, try and make it a, a speaking moment. So we should probably expect more of that kind of stuff. That's a thing. Okay, so um, in uh, ScienceNews.org. Uh, Scientists took conspiracy theories about SARS-CoV-2 uh, 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 or origin seriously and debunked them. Uh, so basically, the the whole idea that it was designed in a lab, we were seeing that all over the place. Right. Uh, this will be easily Googleable, um, but the the all of the the viral markers, all of the genetic markers, are all from nature. Um, and of course, again, a conspiracy theorist will be like, "Yeah, that's just what they want you to think because they're fucking idiots." Right. Uh, just in case anyone is is, is curious about how I feel about conspiracy yeah. theories. Yeah, anyway, when, so you, when, not, you, when you when you make that when you make that leap, you're making the same leap as people that don't believe in evolution because bananas, you know, you're making the same kind of stupid leap. Uh, sorry, man. You know about that one, right? That, that, never get, that one never gets old. Bananas uh, were created oh. to be the shape they are because they fit the hand of an ape was uh, right. you know, one of their yeah. one of their talking points. Um, and it just so, stays fresh and like you could just feel it like it's, it's a wrapper. I mean, obviously that was made by God. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Fuck. Uh, have you ever read uh, Dawkins' book, The Greatest Show on Earth: The Story of Evolution? I have, I have not. Oh my God! The, he makes some. He gives some examples uh, that prove evolution. Really simple examples. Gypsy moths in England, yeah, uh, are um, are ha, were dark in color when they started paying attention to uh, to specimen types in the 1880s, 1890s. They're dark gray. Okay, when the Industrial Revolution ended and they stopped putting so much coal soot into the air, you know the whole idea of London fog? It's not fog. It was never fog. It was industrial pollution. So yeah. there is no, London is not really a foggy place. Anyway, so when the air cleared up, um, the, 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 the birch trees and ash trees that have light colored bark are where gypsy moths live and, yeah. uh, and lay their eggs. The gypsy moths change color in about 10 years. Once the, the, tree, uh, the, the tree bark started lightening up, uh, you know, birds peck the, the moths off the tree bark if they can see them. And yeah. because their color was getting different from the tree bark, all the dark ones were pecked off and all the light colored ones were not. So gypsy moths are light now. And they probably were before the Industrial Revolution. So there's an example of them actually evolving in real time uh, to an external pressure. So that's like a super simple example of how evolution works, right? It's not, you know, like maybe half of 1% of gypsy moths were light in color. And those yeah. are the ones that didn't get pecked off the trees. Therefore, every you know their genetic markers uh made the species go back to light color right well and, that, and again that's 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 because like religious people like to offer like one-off anecdotes right like there right. was there was a seal once that somebody radiocarbon dated to 18 million years ago ipso facto radiocarbon dating is all wrong right um, right right like it's not that the machine was broken 
So it's important to understand that that story that you just told about the moths is true of literally everything that walks and right. breathes and has DNA right. everywhere, right? Yeah, like that. That you. That's just a simple way to discuss it. But that's yeah. literally happening at all times. So you take it like any university genetics course, you're going to be working with fruit flies. You can right. watch. You can actually force uh, 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 evolutionary changes over a yeah. really really short period of time because they have a, a small lifespan, right? Bacteria um, as well. Bacteria in petri dishes. You can you can change entire colonies' genetic markers in about you know, in about six months, because, the, yep. you know, you can have a thousand generations of bacteria in that much time. Yep. Uh, so you Just can change them pretty pressure. regularly. Right. Uh, the other one of the other examples in the book that I really loved was you have a uh, an artery. I can't remember if it's an artery or a vein. It's been a while since I read this that runs from the top of your heart over your clavicle, your clavicle and back down uh, to another part of your circulatory system. Okay. And if you took that that vessel out, it's about a foot and a half long. Yeah. Okay. Um, it no, the reason it goes over your clavicle is because at one time we were not vertical, we were horizontal, uh -huh. right? And it, it made, it made sense in that moment. And giraffes have the same thing, you know, but it's eight feet long because the distance from a giraffe's heart to its clavicle and back is four feet, you know, on average <laughs> in an adult size animal. So uh -huh. if it if giraffes were actually designed, you know, wouldn't it have been easier for the designer to just snip that and make it shorter? <laughs> Right. I mean, it's a super easy example of, you know, it doesn't make it doesn't make sense unless it, it took generations upon generations upon generations upon generations for the for the animal to reach the size and shape that it is. And yeah. there there are literally tens of millions of examples like that in anatomy uh, of things that we don't need or evolved a certain way just because of, of how we evolved uh, that a, a, a clever designer, someone, I don't know, omniscient, omn omnipresent and and smarter than everybody else would have just designed it better to begin with instead of just tacking parts on later. But, um, but Greg, like that designer wanted you to think that everything was, you know, of the devil and evolution. So that designer thought of that a long time ago and then just made sure, everything okay. that way. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. Same, this is the same creator that killed, I don't know, tens of millions of people in, in the, in the old Testament alone. Yeah. You know, yeah. Oh, he's an asshole, angry sure. God that hates people. Yeah. Legitimately a shithead. Uh, yeah, yeah and, and buried all the dinosaur bones because that's really funny. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the, the arguments are, uh, uh, how should we say, uh, not good. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're not good. Morning, Julie Murphy. Nice to see you in here this morning. Donna Van Meter says, that's why it will never happen. Leverage uh, to labor. Oh, we, we already did that one. Sorry, I missed the, I, I thought we were, I didn't think we were caught up on comments, but we kind of kind of are. Uh, yeah, like our lower back isn't intelligently designed. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <Sorry. Sorry. laughs> yeah, it. yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, welcome to the heresy show. I'm, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's how we roll. Uh, it's fine. Uh, internal mammary artery, uh, they use this artery and bypass. There you go. Yep, absolutely. Good morning, Maria. Nice to see you. So, another science article that I found in you know, my thing this morning that I really liked. Space, the final illusion, the intuitive idea that objects influence each other because they're in physical proximity is soon to become another of those beliefs that turn out to be wrong when we look deeper. So Wait, undermi undermining Newtonian physics. I'm going to link that one in the in the thread here because it's a mind bending little read. Um, Wait, yeah. so like, isn't that talking about gravity? Like what? No, no, it's talking about uh, uh, about locality the the concept of locality that objects affect each other more when they're closer together than they do when they're farther apart which is like gravity but it's not directly related and the idea is <laughs> that they're finding out now that objects affect each other across much much greater distances just not in obvious ways what are you talking about so i'm telling not you man, you should read this not, yeah if we're not talking about if we're not talking about a gravatic reaction right like how are they interacting at all like that. okay so okay so 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 everybody from newton to Leibniz to to uh to uh to einstein operated on the principle that you, uh, newtonian physics which by the way is how we still get rockets to specific locations on other 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 orbiting bodies right has to do with relative space in what he considered a finite universe okay that you know distance and and motion you know, motion and, and tracking have to do with uh, your position in an absolute space. The problem is when they ask him, well, what defines the absolute space? He says, well, that's up to God, right? So, so Newton did uh, that age old argument. I don't right. know. Right, <laughs> exactly. That, that, that only God knows that, 
right? And, okay. and uh, people forget about Newton that he was a fairly religious fellow and an alchemist, and and he had some some uh, some spiritual beliefs that now we would consider a little hokey, right? He was just really uh, good at math. But locality is an aspect of an even more compelling illusion that we exist within an absolute space with respect to which we mark our positions as we move through it. Thus, Newton opined that motion is ultimately defined as change of position with respect to absolute space. If this seems mm. obscure because no measurement can establish a relationship of the physical object into this imagined absolute space, Newton assured us that absolute space is seen by God, making your location relative to it in an aspect of the divin of divinity in the world. Uh, we humans must make do with relative positions and motions, which are defined relative to physical objects that we can see. So that all comes down to like uh, this, any, any big theory as kind of a set of variable sliders, right? That allow like fudge room to, to make them work out. And what they're saying now is that, that since we now know that there really is no absolute edge to everything, that we have to rethink locality as a, uh, as a, you know, it, it makes, it makes intuitive sense to us, but it may not be the, the reality. Um, okay. So just to, just to, when you were saying they, they interact with, with each other, I was thinking like applying some kind of force, but it sounds more like they're saying that, you know, there it's, it's problematic to think about two objects in space having right. an absolute positional value because yeah. there's no frame of reference, right? right. Which, which, which I agree with, except that there, you might be able to create a frame of reference on a single quanta of space time. Yes. Which, okay. which might not matter for anything bigger than that one particular quanta, right? Like the, 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 so, I mean, right. now granted, like the, the energetic fields that uh, that even an atom in a very boring rock are going to have, um, right. they don't end. They get probabilistically less strong the farther away you go. So there some, might also be like some some. But, uh, but uh, okay, some but quantum out. physics tells us that two two particles that encounter each other and then then fly apart can become entangled across infinite distance. They they attain the properties of each other, some properties of each other, and keep them even if they move light years apart from each other quantum entanglement that's, that's is what's deeply in play theoretical here. but yeah no, okay so uh, okay, quantum entanglement but, is fun yeah so we're getting closer to the idea that that maybe everything we thought about about locality is is uh there's more to it than than just uh well, that, see that's the thing like, like sean carroll when he starts talking about multiple universes he does the uh I think it's the mindscape podcast uh, he's one of the most uh, preeminent theoretical physicists walking on the face of the earth and can actually speak English in a way that right. dummies like me can understand, which is why he's got a podcast. That's awesome. Um, well, even ahead. Einstein didn't have a good answer for this. He called it spooky action at a distance. Nobody does. <laughs> Nobody knows. But that's like, so this, and, and the, the, the trying to figure out how this stuff works is how people like Sean Carroll are very seriously saying to other humans, no, no, there's multiple universes in all likelihood. This is just one out of maybe quadrillions. We don't know. Um, all of that action is happening somewhere. It's just not happening here. And he just right. says it like, oh, hey, what'd you have for breakfast this morning? I don't know, multiple <laughs> fucking universes. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Sean Carroll. Okay. Well, um, the other thing about the other thing about uh, about entanglement is that we now know an experimenter can change the properties of one particle by changing the properties of another part of the of the other entangled particle vast distances away. Yes. You can change the spin of things in one by affecting the spin and, of and I think in another. The, the thing for, for us three-dimensional beings to contemplate is that that distance is meaningless in higher dimensions. It doesn't right. mean anything, right? And they're talking about uh, uh, higher dimensions in, in theoretical physics all the time, and I don't understand it. I just want to just throw it out there. I'm using words I do not understand in this moment. Right. But I wonder sometimes if this is just, you know, when you're, okay, when you're working with a very strong uh, deep learning AI, right? They'll get results at the end of it that end up being proven right, but they have absolutely no idea how it got from A to B, right? Right. And there's actually no way for them even to know how it got from A to B. I would posit, and this is my version of the God argument, that because this is a simulation based entirely on math, we're just seeing the, the, the distance in the, the calculated output without being able to see every step in between it. Did I just lose you? No, I'm, I'm, somebody's having a crisis here and I'm trying to impact it. I was trying to be smart, goddammit.
people can't people are not what are we having a pandemic Isn't that annoying a, when you say something smart something? and i'm not paying attention <laughs> yes nailed it okay fair enough um yep yeah according to said speaking about that theoretical stuff uh, like that in a way that regular folks can understand as a superpower. That's why some of these scientists become famous. Yeah, this article is definitely worth a read. There's stuff in here that, that right. I, I get. There's other stuff that I don't quite get, but I always love that there are people out there working on those things. And yeah. I am going to have to jump off. No, um, that's okay. Yep. All right. Let me know if there's anything that I can help with from my hovel. Yeah, uh, probably not, but uh, I'll give you a shot All in a little right. while here, okay? Okay. Sounds good. All right. Cheers, guys. Love you guys. Good morning. Uh, Sasquatch is real. Have a great day. Hey, you're, you have the button. Yeah, I do. So what do you think? Do you think Sasquatch is